So everything is vibration. Consciousness shifts into different realities through changing its frequency. This is done most effectively by deliberate focus or meditation. So, in our society, we have gathered a lot of mixed, what I call mixed frequencies. Most of us consist of a lot of mixed frequencies. We're very unfocused, which is okay. I'm not trying to make you like a monk or like have you concentrate upon a single object for the rest of your life. That's very boring. It's not interesting. But what I do want you to be really clear on is when you are being out of alignment with yourself. Because when you're being out of alignment with yourself, you feel bad. And when you feel bad, that's a true signal that you're being out of alignment with the way creation actually works most effi efficiently. So if you wish to be efficient at being of service and being a good boy and a good girl, and if you wish to be efficient in manifesting your dreams, you have to notice when you feel good and when you don't feel good. Because that's the only means you have to actually knowing whether you're doing something that's wise or stupid. Now many people's minds take over when they grasp to spirituality, when they grasp to certain teachings. They think they understand the concepts of the teachings and they might very well understand these concepts. But then they gain the innocent arrogance of believing that the teachings supersede how one feels. So in other words, one starts to place one's feelings in certain boxes that make sense from the teachings or the teacher's perspective. Now this is a very bad mistake, even though you can't make any mistake. It's a very bad choice because you're literally going against nature, you're going against your own stream, and you're separating yourself from true wisdom. So true wisdom requires you to be really attentive to your overall general feeling state. If your feeling state feels really holistically good, you feel abundant, you feel free, you feel loving, you feel giving, you feel like you're on top of the world, then somehow you must have aligned your frequencies right the moment right before that experience. Or just in general, that day, your mind or your perspective, your focus, must be in alignment with something that's actually in alignment for you and therefore for all of creation. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So yeah, this is done most effectively by deliberate focus or meditation. So many of us, again, have these mixed frequencies. Therefore, focus can be quite helpful in streamlining your vibration and really getting to know the nature of consciousness and the nature of frequency and the nature of who you are as an individuated expression of the all that is consciousness. Your individuated I am consciousness is an expression, is a reflection, it's an extension of the all that is, all simultaneously in one moment, timelessly so aware of everything all at once, consciousness. You are an expression of that, an extension of that. Does that make sense? Do you feel that? Do you believe that? You cannot be separated from consciousness because you are consciousness but you are consciousness experienced through your particular focal point of I am. Makes sense, right? Okay. So, it really helps to gain focus. Focus really helps. Deliberate attention really helps in getting to know who you are. And there's no greater pleasure in life than to know who you truly are. Than to know, we could sort of go into the philosophical realm of it and say like why you're here and what you're here to do, what your purpose is. And sometimes these ideas can be distracting. But in general, that is a correct statement. It's very liberating to know who you are and why you are here. Does that, that does not mean that you need to know exactly what you are to do specifically and when you have to do it. It's more of a general sense of clarity as to what intention did you bring with you or what theme are you here to explore or what primordial quality of consciousness do you most desire to be in alignment with and to be an expression of, an example of? So just for half a minute, take a deep breath, let your thoughts give them away. And ask yourself, why am I here? And don't go into specifics like to be a lawyer or to be a spiritual teacher or any of that, but be specific in a different way. Be specific vibrationally speaking. So why are you here to share what? To become more of what? What frequency? What vibration of consciousness? What quality of existence are you here to dive into more, to learn more of, and to be a more pristine example of to other, the rest of yourself, other selves? Just for a few seconds, tune into that question. Who are you? Why are you here? What's most important to you? And I'm assuming that you have found some type of quality, even if it's as abstract as unconditional love, which is absolutely gorgeous. 
It can be more specific, but it doesn't have to be. So as soon as you find a particular vibration of consciousness, a quality of existence that you feel really drawn towards, that you feel like, yes, this is what I wish to be an example of. This is what I wish to embody and exude and vibrate as. When you find that, let's go into the concentration aspect of it. So simply place your attention on the idea that brings you into that quality of your choice. So think, in other words, simply think of the state of your choice, the frequency of your prefer preference, your soul's preference in that sense. Bring your attention to that idea and see how maybe there may be some distractions. You may go back and forth. But overall, you have a pretty clear picture back and forth of that image or of that sensation or of that idea. So you bring your attention back to it again and again. You focus on it again and again. This is concentration. Now, as you keep doing that, you will find that there's prolonged moments where you sort of drop into the experience of that imagination, of that focal point. And suddenly, for that moment, focus becomes effortless and continuous, even if it's just for five seconds. Simply bring it back again and again to that quality. Feel it, imagine it, perceive it. And you will find that the stream of your attention becomes more constantly focused on that and less focused on your physical body here. You're becoming more non-physically focused upon the quality of consciousness of your choice. Notice this. It becomes easier and easier. Even with this single minute, it becomes easier and easier. This is meditation. You start to experience prolonged moments of continuous flow, like oil being poured from one pot into the next as a constant stream of conscious awareness of the object of your choice. Now, if you dive even further into this, and let go of your sense of self by simply being really excited, being really engaged with the focus of your choice. Really imagine the finer details of that imagination, of that quality. How would you express yourself? What would you feel like? What would it look like? What would the smile on your face look like? Really embody, absorb the quality of your choice. Really merge with it. Drop into it until all else fades away. And all you perceive is the pristine, crystalline vision of your focus. Like empty space being filled up only with the quality of your choosing. And you start to lose, gently lose awareness, or even for just moments, lose awareness of you having a body, of you sitting in a room, and all you really perceive in that moment or for those glimpses is what it's like to be that frequency of consciousness. So imagine your preferred reality, your preferred state of being, your preferred state of circumstance. It's all one thing eventually. And completely let go into this reality. Make it more real than this one. Allow yourself to know that imagination is real, equally as valid of a choice as physical imagination. Let those qualities blossom. Feel them, see them, be them act according to that and you will get glimpses of bliss glimpses of merger glimpses of union now this may take some practice may take a few tries but it's definitely not out of reach you can merge with any object of your choosing because please realize you're not a physical creature you are a consciousness choosing to focus upon the experience of a physical creature so you might as well every once in a while or even more often than not focus upon the quality of your choosing the non-physical quality of consciousness that you wish to very efficiently and quickly embody more of in a sense most people are always in a state of samadhi or merger with their physical body even though it's a choice so this is not a new concept to you whenever you feel completely identified with this reality this physical reality you are in samadhi you are in union consciousness with this particular portion or option of creation. As soon as you realize that all realities are equally valid expressions of infinity, you can start choosing different experiences and let go into them, drop into them fully. Make them experiential completely. When you're dreaming at night, you're in samadhi with the dream state. You forget all about your physicality. You forget all about this world. You can't even perceive it anymore. Simply 
become more masterful in this, become more conscious of this. Because if you do not consciously choose how you think and how you feel, in other words, if you don't consciously choose your frequency of being, your quality of consciousness, you're going to get lost in what I call the substitute caretaker. Some people call it the ego effect or the ego, but it's simply the automatic mind. It's us giving away our free will to conditioned ideas and saying, well, I'm out of control. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a puppet. I'm just a servant. I'm just nothing. I don't know what's going on. Then the only option for your consciousness is to take care of you for you. And the only means that it has of doing so on this level of consciousness is what we call the unconscious mind or unconscious beliefs. Beliefs that are not deliberately chosen by you. They're picked up along the way. That's why most people have mixed frequencies. And that's why most people have mixed up lives. Your life is an immediate reflection of your state of consciousness. If you clarify and crystallize your state of consciousness in accordance with your chosen focus, your chosen imagination, your chosen state of non-physicality, then the physicality will surround you in accordance with your non-physical vibratory qualities of being. So learn to take back your free will from the unconscious mind where it seems like you're absolutely without control to the conscious deliberate focus until you start realizing, hey, wait a second, I am meant to be a conscious co-creator of creation. And then things start flowing for you because you start flowing in alignment with the truth of creation. Does this make sense? So learn to choose deliberately the qualities of consciousness, the state of being, that feels like it's in greatest alignment with the truth of your spirit. How do you know? You feel amazing. <laughs> if you feel bad, then something is out of alignment. It's a very simple signal. If you feel not good, that means your thinking is incorrect. That's all that means. If you feel great, it means your thinking is correct. That's all that means. And as soon as more of your thinking is correct and more of your feeling expands into amazingness and bliss and feeling really, really good about yourself, about life, feeling in alignment, feeling connected, you start to gain greater and greater and greater and greater wisdom, greater and greater capacity to be unconditionally loving to yourself and others. And you become a clearer conduit or channel for transformation, for enlightenment, simply by being yourself, not even trying. You're not even trying. You're just following your bliss. You're just being your bliss. And through that natural state of being, being in alignment, disregarding all the thoughts that think that things should work differently, or even spiritual circles that teach you that desire is ego, stuff like that. Just dismiss that for a moment and just trust in the natural orchestration of the universe, which is feeling good means you're doing something right. You're in alignment with a higher way of seeing things. And of course, if you're in alignment with the higher way of seeing things, you'll be able to become a better fezzle, well, better in a sense, more precise, more efficient at expressing unconditional love and light. Does that make sense? Good. So will you give yourself permission to enjoy life? Will you give yourself permission to be blissful? Will you start focusing more deliberately upon the qualities of consciousness that make you feel amazing? And will you remember and remind yourself that whenever you feel amazing, you feel the most connected. You feel like you are the most abundant, the most capable, the most giving, the most of service. Can you resolve that paradox of the mind where you think you have to suffer in order to be of service and reconcile that in the vision that makes much more sense? Because unity is one unity, it's one being. And why would it set up its creation, which is meant to express itself in such a way that it has to hurt itself in order to be of service to itself? It does not make any sense. So from unity perspective, you will realize that this is actually a really, really fun and carefree universe, essentially so. Now we can use that carefree freedom to make it really hard, to make it really difficult, to make it really unworthy looking that is still done out of freedom. That's how much we are loved. That's how much we are let free, let loose. We're all loose cannons. We're all let loose, in a sense. We're portions of the Creator, and the Creator says, I trust you unconditionally. I love you unconditionally. Go express me in whatever way you see fit. Have fun, or not. 
And many people on this planet have chosen not to enjoy that process. We can reverse that. We can turn it around. We can make that more conscious. In a sense, there's always 